So Jeff in Hi. Allentown, thanks for waiting. Hi. Um, I just wanted to, um, I mean, I, I saw your show two weeks ago when you and Martin were on last. Yeah. And um, you spoke pretty negatively about 12-step programs. And, yes. Um, mm. I'm an atheist. I'm a member of Narcotics Anonymous. I have been for seven years. Isn't Narcotics Anonymous um, run by Scientology? Narcotics Anonymous is not run by Scientology. It's a completely um, autonomous organization separate from other 12-step fellowships or any religious organizations. Hmm. Okay. Um, it's not, it's and, not the same as Narcan. Um, I'm sorry, go ahead. They, go ahead. It's not the, they, they have something called, uh, it doesn't matter, go ahead. Okay, well I just wanted to say, um, yeah, I'm, I've been a member for seven years and the entire time I was, I've been told that I didn't need to believe in a God. Um, I've been working the steps without a belief in a God and um, I find that it's, it's helped me a lot in terms of growing as a human being and I think that when you portray the group or the portray 12-step fellowship as um, something that you have to believe in God and that atheists wouldn't fit in there and, and things I, like I don't, that. We didn't do that. I, well, I, I haven't done that. And it, I've written about Alcoholics Anonymous and I've spoken about Alcoholics Anonymous quite a bit. And I understand that there are groups and that this, this is often a group by group base where there are individual groups that don't necessarily put that much emphasis on God. But when you have court rulings that have ruled that Alcoholics Anonymous is in fact a religious-based organization and nobody can be required to go there, the fact that individual groups don't necessarily hold to that is no more uh, compelling than the fact that some Muslims don't, you know, uh, want to kill infidels. I mean, it doesn't change what the foundational aspect of this is. The, the other things, I mean, there's lots of things that I object to about Alcoholics Anonymous. Um, because I think that they promote this idea of victimhood because right off the bat you have to begin with I am powerless to do anything about this which I absolutely reject um, the okay. fact the fact that somebody can't has not yet been able to to get a handle on their addiction uh, doesn't necessarily mean that they are powerless and what they may need is the empowerment to make those changes and people giving them the tools and helping them out and I've seen many times where yeah. it, where it seems to be the case that many of the 12-step programs replace one addiction with another. You give up the addiction to the substance and you replace it with an addiction to working the program. And the last thing that I, I find just absolutely horrible about Alcoholics Anonymous is that they are deceptive to the point of lying about their recidivism rates. Basically, if you're in the program and you're not drinking, they're gonna count you as a success. And if you ever drink, then clearly you didn't finish the program. Um, so th there's not a good way to figure out exactly how well this program works because all you get is the confirmation bias of people who feel that it does work for them and it's kept them sober. And, and, and what I've said over and over again is, if it's working for you, if that's what it takes to keep you sober and sane, by all means, go for it. I just think there are better ways and I, I'm not a fan. And, and all, all I want to say is that all of those, I agree with all of your objections, except that they seem to, like when you say powerlessness is, is a concept that's, that's defeatist and we should be providing these people with the tools that they need, that's exactly what the steps, in my experience, in Narcotics Anonymous has been that the steps provide me with the tools to live life a life without drugs. What, what's and the first step? The first step is we made that we're powerless of our addiction and that our lives have become unmanageable. Yeah. And my understanding of that is that doing, uh, using drugs and alcohol for me ruins my life and that to, up to the point where I got clean and started working the steps, I was unable or did not have the skills inside myself to resolve that problem and that I needed to reach out for help. And that help doesn't need to be a god. That help could just simply be the other recovering addicts in the program. Cool. And that their experience in dealing with life on a day-to-day -day basis without using drugs could be enough to help me overcome my problem also. Okay. I, I'm, I'm glad to hear that you have, uh, you know, made a successful recovery. And Martin was right. It's Narcanon that's Scientology, not Narcotics yeah. Anonymous. Okay. Yeah. Um, but I, I, just, I just wanted to, I mean, yeah. you're right. There are a lot of groups out there that probably would not be receptive to an atheist. I mean, atheism is the minority position in the United States, for sure. Mm -hmm. So you may not find a group that has atheists with experience working the steps. But I just wanted to make sure that it, you guys understood that there are people who do and that that yeah. might be an option for people 
that when if if I'm an atheist watching your show with a drug problem, that the information is there that it's a possibility, and not to you know shut it out completely. If it's not in their area, then you know that's it is what it is, and that's there, the way there, a lot of the United States is. There are though there are those secular alternatives. And the, one of the biggest points that I make is that because of the court rulings, whereas once upon a time you could force people to go to AA, which means they could end up in a group uh, that focuses on the religious aspects. Um, I would never, I would never ask for that. For that, <laughs> and I don't know anyone in, in narcotics. Are, are we're a completely voluntary membership is voluntary. Come and go as you please. We'd like you to be here if you like to be here, and if you don't want to be here, go. I mean, as far as. Um, well, so so is a, so are the religious AAs. I mean, the, the, you can be there if you want and 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 go if you don't. That doesn't change whether or not they're advocating for religious ideas, and it cha doesn't change whether or not um, they are actually uh, an effective um, way to encourage change. The fact well, that it's, it's, it's as effective as it's as effective as, as anything that I've seen, and and to say that it's not effective because people who don't do it don't stay clean is. It's like, it's, it's like if, if you had this view, I know you've spoken before, Matt, that you've had, yeah. you have um, diabetes and you take insulin for it. If, if insulin helps your diabetes and you don't take it, then <laughs> you're going to have negative health outcomes. Yeah. It's, it's well, a similar thing. Go ahead. Well, if, I was just going to say, wanna, I think wanna, that... I think probably the, you know, the best advice is you know, for anyone who is looking for a recovery group is to research that group and make sure that it's right for you. And, um, and I would also assume that a lot of it has to do with to whatever degree the person applies themselves you know, to, to whatever process they're undergoing. I mean, you hear 12-step processes are uh, very successful for some people and, and the same programs are not successful at all for other people. And I think that whatever program you would get into, you know, it all depends on how the individual applies themselves uh, to, to that recovery and to that level of determination for the recovery. But yeah, I, there are some AA groups that uh, emphasize the religious aspect or the higher power aspect more than others. And you know, I've, I, you're not the first atheist um, who's been undergoing recovery who has called us up saying, I did AA and it was awesome and they didn't shove God down my throat. So yeah, yeah. we know that it's not this endemic thing, but I think there are legitimate criticisms of 12-step of programs generally that okay. could probably be made. And, and here's the bigger problem. Uh, first of all, I don't take insulin. I, I have other medication. But you know what? We can test insulin and we can test those medications and we can determine exactly how effective they are. We cannot do that for a 12-step program. And what, what, well, we can, but AA doesn't permit it because their self-reported statistics on recidivism are dishonest to the core. And this is an objection that has been launched over and over and over again. It's not, hey, you didn't work the program, so it's no surprise that you're back to drinking or back to using. It's, oh, you're back to drinking or back to using, so clearly you didn't work the program. They have it exactly backwards. And so you can't get good recidivism rates on this. So there's no way to determine exactly how effective it is. And what you end up with is a bunch of people for whom it worked or for whom it appears to worked or who are convinced that it worked for them um, reporting just how awesome it is. And then a bunch of other people for whom the, the system did not work um, who are written off as failures. Uh, it's not a failure of the system. It's these people. I have a huge problem with that. If you could show that AA worked, and at what rates and on what percent of the people and what type of people to the same extent that you could with insulin, then maybe your analogy would fit. Okay, um, I, I can see your point and I just have, I don't know, it's social problems are, are more complicated than, than, than that. Yeah, <laughs> there are a lot more variables involved, it's hard to control for them. And I, I, I agree. Also, I, yeah. I, I agree, and it'd be really helpful if Al Alcoholics Anonymous would stop lying and hiding information so that we could actually get good information about it, but they don't. I, I'm not a member of that particular fellowship. Yep. I mean, I, can, I will push for that. I agree. I think it would be better to have that information. I would push for that in my own fellowship. Yeah. yeah. But, well, we're, cool. we're glad you found something that worked for you, man. Uh, thank you. Hey, congratulations, and stay sober. I will. <laughs> Thanks for the call, Jeff. Bye-bye.